Hello and welcome back. In this video, we are looking at the solution to question 5 of the May June 2022 CXE CSEC Mathematics Paper 2. That is the statistics question. It begins A school nurse records the height H of each of the 150 students in a class. And the information is shown here in the table where we have the intervals, the height, the frequency, the midpoint, and the frequency times midpoint. First part of the question says copy, complete the table below using the information to calculate an estimate of the mean height of the students and give your answer correct to one decimal place. So we have two things to fill out in the table, and that is the midpoint for this interval. To find the midpoint, what we do is that we add these um, limits, the low and upper limit, and divide by 2. So 120 plus 140 gives us 260 and dividing that by 2 gives us 130. There's another way you could do this that looking at the midpoints here we realize that the difference between these two is 20. The difference here is also 20 again which means that the the um, intervals here have the same width that is they have the same class size and so we could have just added that 20 to the 110. 110 plus 20 lands us at 130. Having done that now, we need to multiply the 67 times the 130 because this column is a frequency times the midpoint. So frequency here times midpoint. And so we multiply that. And 67 times 130 here gives us 8,710. Now we are going to calculate an estimate for the mean and the mean here is given as the sum of the frequency times the midpoint over the sum of the frequency. And all that means is that we need to add up this column, which is the sum of frequency times midpoint. And once you plug those into your calculator and add them up, it amounts to 18,320. And we are told that it's 150 students. If we were not told that information, then we would add the frequency here. And adding that gives us 150. So all we need to do is divide these two numbers. 1,000, 18,000 rather, 320 divided by 150. And that gives us... 122.1 centimeters. So the median, the mean height here in this um, table, 122.1 centimeters, which lands us around here. All right, moving on to the next part. We need to take a little note first before we answer it because that question has to deal with standard deviation. So we need to refresh our minds a little bit about what standard deviation is. Standard deviation is not something that is taught anymore on the CSEC syllabus, but it still refers to it in terms of usage, but not for calculation purposes. So many people don't bother to teach it. Um, standard deviation though, by definition, is a measure which shows how much variation there is in a data set. Um, so if you have a set of data and you calculate the mean, the standard deviation tells you how, um, how those data within that set are spread out um, around the mean. So starting at the bottom here, a zero value for a standard deviation would mean that all the values in your data set are the same. So there's no variation. There's no spread. There's no change. All of them are the same. No, no variation at all. And uh, a small standard deviation would mean that the numbers are close to the mean. And um, the larger standard deviation value means that the numbers are spread out farther from, from the mean. So that's pretty much what it, what, it, what it tells us. Standard deviation tells us that once you have your mean in a data set, it's, uh, it tells you how the scores within how the, how the data within that group are spread out about the mean. Um, answering the question, no. 
in class B, the mean height of the students is 123.5 centimeters, and the standard deviation is 29.87. I it's written here for convenience. And for class A, same information, we worked out the mean and we're given the standard deviation of 21.38. Now we are asked to comment using the information provided. Um, comment on the distribution. And the distribution has to do with how the scores are spread out, how the scores are, how do they cluster around the mean? Are they far, are they near? And so not sure exactly how much you're expected to write, um, how long should the comment be? I'm not sure about this part, but the comment that we can make is something like this. Because what the standard deviation tells us is how closely or how far the numbers are from the mean within the data set. So in a class, in class A, the heights of the students are closer to the mean, given that the mean here, the, the standard deviation here is smaller than that one. So you would expect that these numbers are further spread than in this one. So in class A, the scores the heights of the students are closer to 122.1 centimeters than in class b where you have 123.5 centimeters what the mean tells us though is that there may be there are taller people in this group in class b hence you have a larger mean and you could you actually could have more outliers more taller people or perhaps short people within this group because the standard deviation is is larger than this one so pretty much that's what it is, um, something like this that we have here, just talking about how they are spread because that's essentially what standard deviation is about, spread. Moving on, the part C has to do with cumulative frequency. So here we have a cumulative frequency table and we are to fill in two missing values again. So four and 20 so we usually we start with the first one then we add 4 plus 20 gives us 24 and 24 plus 35 here would land us at 59 and uh, that's how we find them 59 plus 67 gives us that and so 126 plus 20 gives us 146 and we have completed it by filling in the two missing values that's how cumulative frequency works we start with the first frequency Keep adding until we reach the last one. Now, um, we are supposed to use this information to draw a cumulative frequency curve, which has been started already. Notice that four of the values are in place, one, two, three, four, and we are supposed to fill in the two that we just did. Now, importantly, when you are looking at a graph, you need to look at the axes and see what the scale is saying. So here we are using 2 centimeters to, to um, 20, 1 centimeter to 10, which means that each tiny box within this section here represents 2, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Same thing here, each tiny box represents um, 2. That's important to remember. Now let's go look at our value. So we have, um, let's look at this first. So here we have 80 to 4 and 100 to 20 to 24. So notice what's going on here. 80, usually we use the upper boundary and the cumulative frequency. So it's 80 to 4 and 100 to 24. So what we're going to plot here is 120 to 59. Let's do that. So it's 120 to 59, this is 60. So 59 would be just right about there, just below, halfway in that tiny box. And the other one that we need to plot is 160 to 146. So here we have 160 to 140, this is 140. So 142, 144, 146 would be right there. And now all that we need to do is to draw a curve through our points to make sure that we get a smooth, draw this smooth curve through it. That would represent our graph. 
I try to go through it as smoothly as I can, given that I'm drawing it on the screen. And I don't have as much control as if I was drawing it on paper. But this is turn on, turning out very good. So here we have our cumulative frequency curve. Here we have the heights. And up here we have the number of students. So the first thing that we need to do with our graph is to find the median height. Now the median height is the middle number. There are 150 students. So we divide 150 by 2. And that gives us 75. So the 75th student will lead us to the median height. And so I'm going to draw a line from there, from 75. This is 70. This is 80. So 75 is right in the middle there. So we drop a line from, from there. Right there in the middle. Okay. And then we take that line and drop it down. And what it looks like is it's saying that the median is somewhere around 120, 122, 124. So the median is here is 124 centimeters. That's the median. We also call the median our Q2 value, second quartile, the middle. And so remember, you take a straight line, draw it across, and you do get mark get well, sometimes they give marks for these things. I'm not sure if it's been marked, but it's, use, it's very, very important and useful that you use straight lines like these or broken lines to indicate how you get your answer. Second part, determine the probability that a student is taller than 130 centimeters. Now, this is often called a less than curve. And it's called a less than curve because at each point, for example, here, 100 is telling you the number of students where shorter than 100 centimeter 100 or shorter 120 or shorter um same thing when you read it across 60 persons are 120 centimeters or shorter etc etc so it's often called a less than curve for that so what we need to do is to find 130 here here it is 130 is right here on this line and we're gonna um let me just get rid of that and use a line to do that. So here we go, 130, right there, nice. And then we go across, and there we see our 130 value. 130 leads us to 90, 92, 94, 96. Now there are 150 students in the thing. So we have 150, um, let me just switch back to my pencil here. 150 minus 96. This number here is 96, as I have it on mine. And let's subtract that. 4 from 10 leaves, 6 from 10 leaves 4, then 9 from 14 leaves 5. So I'm having 54 here. So 54 students would be taller than 130. Notice that we have 96 here, and the 96 are shorter than 130. The ones that are taller than 130 are the ones that are up here. Those are the ones we need, which is why we subtract 150 minus 96 to get them. And those are the 54. So the probability that the student is taller than 130 centimeters is going to be 54 over... 150 and as it is with probability we often write our answer in the simplest form this can be reduced so divide both of these by 2 54 divided by 2 that gives us 27 and that's over 75 and that's our answer as it is and that concludes i think the question on statistics Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video useful, then please subscribe as a show of support. Best wishes as you continue to.